Ciao! I'm Laura Lee with Digging Up Roots in the Boot. Thanks for tuning in today. As Italian Americans, we all have a lot in common, yet each person has a unique story. So leave a comment below and let me know what's unique about your Italian heritage. If you like our content and you want to support the channel, be sure and give it a thumbs up, like the video, and also subscribe and hit the notification bell. Hey everybody, welcome back to Digging Up Roots in the Boot. Today I'm here with Bob Sorrentino and he's going to be talking to us about Italian heritage. Hey Bob, how are you today? I'm great. How's everything there in Italy? Everything's fantastic in Italy. Thanks for asking. Now, um, let's start off talking about where your ancestors immigrated from in Italy. Well, my mom's family came from Torito in Bari. Uh, and uh, my dad's family came from Naples. What time frame did they immigrate from Italy to the United States? Actually, they both came around the same time. My mom's family came uh, around 1914, and my grandmother and grandfather and my uh, oldest aunts came because my grandmother didn't want my grandfather fighting in another war. He had already fought in the Libyan War, and she didn't want him fighting in World War I. My dad's family came around 1915. Um, into New York. And both families went into New York City. Wow, that's amazing. So your families immigrated into New York City. Did they end up staying there? Yeah, actually they did. Um, they both settled initially in Manhattan, and then they both wound up in Corona, Queens. For a brief time, uh, I want to say maybe five years or so, uh, my dad's family lived in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, which is where my father was born. Okay. Now, as happens over time, Italian Americans tend to disperse across the United States. Is your family still in the Northeast, or are they kind of scattered everywhere these days? For the most part, they're kind of still in the Northeast, although uh, some have, uh, some are in North Carolina. There are some families in Florida, uh, we're in New Jersey. So, not as close as we used to be, that's for sure. At one time, everybody was in Queens, and now we're scattered. All right, so what was life for you like growing up as an Italian-American? Uh, food, food, and more food. <laughs> okay, Bob, now we have to ask this very important question. In your household, is it sauce or gravy? Uh, mom's family, where we spent most of our time, it was gravy, because we always had the gravy meat with the macaroni. That's the uh, Bari side. The Naples side, I don't remember that much. Uh, but I would have to probably say they were sauce people. Okay, all right, fantastic. And okay, so you talk about a lot of food. What other things did you experience that you think were uniquely Italian-American as you were growing up? I don't know if it was uniquely Italian-American, but I can say that uh, in both families, the aunts and the uncles were like, you know, extra sets of parents, if you will. Um, you could count on them for anything. Uh, they were all very fun-loving, uh, happy people, uh, hard-working people, and, um, I, you know, at least from my family, I feel blessed that we had that relationship with our aunts and uncles. Yeah, that's one amazing thing. In Italian families, family always comes first. Absolutely, yeah. And then okay. food. Yeah, family and food, they're right side by side with each other. Okay, now, do you have dual Italian citizenship? I don't. Um, I wish I did. I had thought about it uh, a few times, but, you know, I know it's a very, very long process, and uh, I don't think, for me, it would be too tough to gather all the documentation because I have a lot of it, and there aren't a lot of people that I don't know. You know, I know who all my grandparents were and where they were from, the towns and everything, um, but I never just got around to it. Yeah, it's definitely something that takes a big time commitment and a financial commitment as well. But, you know, when you talk about that it gets handed down from generation to generation to your kids, to your grandkids, to your great grandkids, I guess in the end it's all worthwhile. I would think so too. And, and that's something that, you know, I, every once in a while I think about pursuing it. Um, I actually know somebody in Italy who's on, uh, I guess, one of these committees now to try and jumpstart the Italian economy. And I said, you should let the old Italian Americans in, you know, as long as we have a little bit of documentation, we'll help the economy. Yeah. Now, actually, you know, the Italian government is very pro having Italians living abroad get their citizenship recognized. 
it's just the fact that the burden of proof lies on the person who's putting the application in. Right. So yeah. that's the challenge. Um, okay, so now tell me, when did you become interested in digging up your roots in the boot? Well, you know, I always, as, as a kid, I always loved looking through the old photographs. Um, you know, we had the, the book with the black pages and the little tabs that you slid the pictures in. And um, I was used to make my mother drag that out. And, and I was always interested in history, too. One of the um, pieces of memorabilia, if you will, that we had that my grandmother bought was what I consider my grandfather's calling card. It's about the size of the next card and it has his name and it says that he comes from the Dukes of Capricotta and that always intrigued me. You know, I was always busy at work as things started slowing down. I had a little bit more time uh, and the internet was better for research. Uh, I started with that card and then started, you know, looking for um, my father's grandfather's family. And how long ago was that? Probably about 15 years. Well, the first thing I did was very simple. I Googled uh, his name. And the first piece of information that I found was a, uh, a record from um, Libro di Oro, which showed a Niccolo Piramalo marrying an Emilia Caracciolo in 1882, which fit nicely with uh, everything that I knew. My father's name was Nicholas. Uh, my oldest aunt's name was Amelia, so the naming conventions fit, the year fit, uh, so everything kind of matched up. But I had never heard, I would never knew my great-grandmother's last name. So I called my cousin, who lived with my grandmother, and asked her if she ever heard the name Cracciolo, and she said, well, yeah, that was Nanny's mother's name. Uh, so that opened up a lot of doors to me because... Once I got entrenched in the Libro de Oro, I found out that both families had a very long recorded history. Well, that's fantastic. So you just kind of stumbled across that and ran with it. Yeah, and I always expected to find, because we had this card, that, to find a lot of history around my great-grandfather. Little did I know that my great-grandmother led me back to all the kings and queens of Europe as a direct descendant of theirs. Okay, now what about your travels to Italy? Well, we went once about 25 years ago. Uh, we were living in England, so it was an easy trip. Um, and we went to Rome, of course. Uh, everybody goes to Rome, I guess, first. First, you have to go to Rome. And then we took, we took the train down to Naples to pick up a car to drive to Sorrento. And little did I know that at the time that uh, the Naples train station was about a half a mile from where my grand, my great grandmother family lived. Uh, they lived on Via Carbonara, and apparently they must have owned a good part of the whole street because when I look back at the Antonati records, uh, it shows that somebody lived at number 23 and somebody lived at number 28 and number 30 and number 32. Yeah, so they owned the whole building then, right? It looks that way, yeah, and the building's still there, so you can see it, and it, it kind of looks like, you know, one of those long row house type of buildings with a separate door for every apartment. And now you said at the time you went 15 years ago, you weren't aware that that's where your family was from. Uh, well, I knew they were from Naples, but I had no clue where in Naples, or I didn't know any of the history. In fact, I didn't even know that my grandmother had family there still. Yeah, so I'm assuming on your next trip you have plans to go visit again. Uh, yeah, we were supposed to go in April, and we were praying that we were going to squeeze it out, and it never happened, so now we're shooting for next May. All right, now I want to talk a little bit more. I want to dive into what your podcast is all about. Can you give us a general background about it? Well, yeah, you know, I, I've, I did all of that research, and I found out so many fascinating things about my family and everything that... Uh, initially, I just wanted to start to share that. And then, you know, I, I gave some pointers to people on um, what I found and how to research the Antonati or, you know, how to use family search and, you know, links to ancestry and um, things like that. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then I started looking into, well, what else would Italian Americans want to know about? So I started looking at uh, Little Italy's around the world. Uh, and then I also started looking at 
um, the regions of Italy, the 20 regions of Italy, because they're so vastly different in culture, food, uh, dialect, and, you know, people like that. People find that very interesting. Yeah, so what kind of feedback do you get from your viewership? I get, I get a lot of great feedback on that because people know that they're from, let's say, Calabria, but they don't know the history of Calabria. They don't know that there were tribes in Italy before the Romans or before the Greeks um, that, you know, some of these regions go back, you know, five, 8,000 years. And so long before the Romans, as I said, there, were cult there was culture, there were food, there were people, there were languages, and some of the culture and even parts of the dialects still stems from that. You know, I think that's really important because the 20 regions are so very diverse, especially from south to north, and even from the east coast to the west coast. You have so many different cultures and influences from different um, nations throughout the history of Italy. So that's really fantastic that you're doing that, Bob. Now, you've interviewed a lot of people. Talk to me about your process when you're approaching people to interview them. Yeah, well, the first thing I do is you know, try to find people to do it. And I started with a couple of friends initially and just said, well, let's test this out and see if you know, anybody wants to listen to it and, and how it goes. But pretty much my process is I'll look on Amazon for books about Italian-Americans or things in Italy that interest me, and I'll reach out to that author and via email and say, would you like to do something? You could talk about your book or, you know, we could talk about the research you did or your family. Um, I found a couple of people who did Italian citizenship, citizenship and wanted to talk about that. Uh, and that's always, that's always fun to hear their trials and tribulations. And I, I have a great friend um, from grammar school who moved to Italy a year ago and she, you know, she was the guinea pig for that. <laughs> so I uh, had her talk about how she got her Italian citizenship. Um, and then I just go into the Facebook groups, especially the genealogy ones, and ask people if they would like to tell their story. Facebook groups, as far as Italian genealogy go, are just a fantastic way for people who have a common background to connect and even help each other in their own research. Now, through those groups, were you able to get any further with your research on your family? Yeah, actually I did with my paternal grandmother especially because Piramalo is not a very common name in Italy. Everybody that has that name all comes from the one family. And so I just went on a search and asked Piramalo people, have you ever heard of uh, Count Giacomo and Duchess Beatrice? I think I'm related. Uh, here's what I know about the family. And slowly but surely, I started getting feedback from them and saying, yes, you know, we know who those people are, and this is my great-great-grandfather. And they would send photos, and they would send photos of memorabilia that they had. And so we were able to put all of that together. And I never had a clue that they existed, and they certainly didn't know that they had any relative in the United States. Yeah, the internet sure has changed the way we're able to connect with each other. Now, another important factor that we have when we're looking at um, looking into our history and doing research is getting DNA testing done. Have you had the opportunity to get your DNA tested? Yeah, I did two tests. Uh, I did one with Ancestry, of course, uh, because they're the one that the, does the most of the cousin matches. And at the time, they were probably only one of three. Now there's a lot of companies. Uh, later on, um, I did Living DNA, which is based in Switzerland. And uh, I was hoping to get a lot more information on Italians' DNA, but apparently the Italians don't do DNA tests, and probably because they don't have to, because they, <laughs> they know where they came from. That's a really good point, Bob. Here in Italy, people think, they're like, why are you researching your history? Our family has lived here for the past 400 years. We know everybody. We know everything. So, so that's interesting. There's a, definitely a different take that Italians have than Americans do on family history research. And then the other neat company that I found, you don't have to do the, the test with them, but you could send them your DNA sample. And that's called My True Ancestry. And they, do, they match you not to cousins. They match you to archaeological digs from tens and 20 and 30,000 years ago. Wow. That's an interesting perspective, for sure. 
Now, you made an interesting point that when you went through Ancestry, you were able to make a lot of connections. And when you went through this other site in Switzerland, that you weren't able to make as many connections. And that's a really good point because each DNA company has their own database. So information that you get from one database can be very different if you enter it into another database. Yeah, that's right. Aside from the DNA testing, um, you hear a lot of feedback from the people that you interview, whether you're interviewing them about their family history or Italian citizenship, or maybe they actually work in helping other people discover their family history. What is the most common thread that you find amongst your listeners? I think the most common thread is, especially with the people who are researching their families, is that we all are driven to obsession to find out the details on people. Uh, you know, like my wife would say to me, you looking for the dead relatives again? And I say, yeah, it's fascinating That's to know. And maybe because I like history, um, but Almost to a person, everybody says the same thing. I feel like I have to find this out. Aside from your podcast, you also have a blog, don't you? Yeah, and that actually, I did the blog first. Um, again, attempt to just document what I was doing for my family, but then also putting out there other interesting facts. And the more I found out about my distant relatives or my distant ancestors, I should say, uh, the more intriguing it got. And so that's how your whole blog started in the first place. Right, yeah. How did it expand and take on something else? Quite honestly, I started running out of things to say about my family. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, what's other interesting things that, that people might want to look at? And one that, got a very, that gets very uh, big reviews and uh, a lot of hits is Italian surnames because everybody wants to know where my surname comes from or what does it mean and I was floored to find out that there's over 300,000 surnames in Italy and Italy has wow. more surnames than any other country. Your family name is not very popular therefore it made it very simple for you to find your family. People with a popular surname like Russo it becomes very difficult to locate your family if you don't know exactly where they're from. A lot of what I get is people saying that, but they find them, you know, if you're dedicated enough, you find it. And, you know, what I tell people is sometimes you have to walk away for a while, a week, two weeks, a month, um, because you start to get um, stale and you hit a roadblock and you think you're never going to get to the end. But you do get there. And I had an interesting roadblock with my second great grandmother who was from Switzerland. And I never thought in a million years I would find the Swiss connection. I was Googling one day, I came across a book um, from the Italian military that showed her father as a captain in the Swiss Guard in Naples, and her husband was a cavalry soldier from the, from the Neapolitan army at the same time, and I found a site that said, write us in Italian, German, or English, and we'll answer you. So I gave them the details, and they sent me a link to all the notable families in Lucerne, and I was able to get her roots back to the 1400s. So never give up. It's there. You just have to find it. Civil records in Italy only being available to the starting in the early 1800s, but there's actually other records that are available if you want to go back and search further in your Italian roots. And those are in the church records, the land records, and also in the notary records. Have you done any research in those as of yet? I've done a little bit, but, you know, it's hard. that's hard to do from here, uh, especially if you don't speak Italian like, like myself. Um, but I have reached out to a few people that, you know, including, you know, like yourself, that can dig into those records. Yeah, it takes, it takes a lot of time because many of those records aren't indexed to begin with. And some of them are either written in Old Italian or they're written in Latin. Right. And I'm hoping when we, when we get there, for example, especially with my grandmother's family, um, because their families were so well known, uh, and I, you know, the church is right on the corner and they have the chapel with the name on it, that, you know, maybe we get a, you know, a little special consideration. There's a possibility. A lot of times when you talk about nobility and well-known families, there are also private organizations that archive those records as well. So you can find a whole wealth of information in the private archives. 
Yeah, and I did. I have found some of that stuff online, and there are books published uh, on some of them. Your plans for researching are never going to end. You're coming to Italy soon. You're going to visit your ancestral villages. Do you have any relatives that are still alive here that you stay in touch with or you hope to meet? Yeah, several from both families of my grandmother. We had planned a lunch, and I'm sure that'll happen. The one person in particular, she's very excited and working with me. She's going to take me down to some of the ancestral homes in Calabria that are still there. There's also uh, Villa Piramalo and Ischia that is still there, I believe still partially owned by the family. The Duchess's home in Capricotta is now the uh, City Hall. Okay, so now your podcast and your blog are things that where you put information in and other people get to enjoy it. But in your Facebook group, I'm sure you have a lot of interaction with the people in your community. Yeah, and um, I think I have about 1,900 in the group now. And it's, it's great because I don't always get a chance to answer as quickly as I would like. But a lot of people pitch in and if somebody needs, it, needs a, something translated uh, or somebody's researching a family name, um, they can put it out there. And quite a few people have found cousins uh, just on that site or you know other relatives just by putting a name in and say, hi, I'm looking for this person from this town. And somebody says, yeah, I know who it is. Especially with uh, some, some of the people from Bari, because that's where my mom is from. And um, the records there are actually very, very good, much to my surprise. I was able to find like 150 records. We were lucky on my mom's side in that um, when my grandparents came over, they left my uh, or left their oldest child there, my uncle Giovanni, and he didn't come until 1950, so his whole family was born there. And um, they uh, they know the town, they've been back. Um, I've talked to them about well, what life was like in Italy in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And um, my youngest cousin, he uh, interviewed my uncle in Bares. And finally, I convinced them to translate that. So it's a f f fabulous record of the family. That's fantastic. When you say he interviewed them, was that a video interview or was it in writing? No, he had it on tape, <laughs> real tape, because uh, I think it was probably done in the, in probably the late 70s, maybe early 80s when he yeah. did it. So he had to go find the tape recorder to actually listen to it. <laughs> I know a lot of people, when they do extended family research like that, Bob, they put together websites of their family. Have you done something like that? I started it, but I really then just started putting everything on the blog site because it was just easier and I could put it in the format that I wanted to put it in. Um, you know, if anybody is interested in doing something like that for the family, it really doesn't cost that much if you're, if you're into it. Um, but that's... That's kind of the way it went. I have to ask you, what are your future plans for continuing to grow your online presence and to encourage and promote Italian heritage? Well, one of the things is, is hoping to do some more interviews like this. Uh, I did want to write um, a book about my family and about my research, which I was hoping to finish after the trip from Italy, so that's kind of on hold. <laughs> um, the other thing that I'm doing is, uh, you know, still pursuing, you know, people to interview, and one of the neat interviews I have lined up coming in October is um, Dr. Uh, Joseph S uh, Skelsa, who is the founder, I guess, and the curator of the Italian American Museum in New York City, and they're building a whole new building totally dedicated to just Italian Americans and the history. So that's coming up in October. So Bob, yeah. if, if people want to connect with you online, can you tell us uh, the information of where they can find you? Uh, yeah, the best place is the blog page, because that also has the link to the podcast, and all the podcasts are there too, and that's the best place to go. So that's www.italiangenealogy.blog. And then also uh, the Facebook group, which has the same name, Italian Genealogy Blog. Uh, so those are the two best places to try and reach me. And if anybody hears this and wants to do an interview on the podcast about their research, that's how to get, get to me. 
Okay, that's fantastic, Bob. Thank you for sharing all that wonderful information. I am so happy that you're doing what you're doing. Um, the Italian community needs this kind of support and it helps everybody to connect and to stay connected to the roots in Italy. So I thank you for that. Oh, thank you and I appreciate the time. Have a fantastic day, Bob, and until we meet again. Thanks, you too. We'll meet in Calabria in May. Okay, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in and as always, stay rooted in Italy.